In this video, I'm going to walk through X402, a new type of payment system that allows users to send payments as part of their HTTP requests to your APIs. I'll walk through how X402 came about, how it works under the hood, and then we'll dive into creating a simple application where you create an API and charge users to access the data that it returns. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. X402 comes from this original HTTP response status code called 402, which meant payment required. And up until recently, no one really used this 402 response code because it didn't really mean much payment required. Typically you would use a 401 or a 403 to represent if a user shouldn't have access to something. So Coinbase invented an extension of this existing HTTP response code called X402. Hence the name and extension of 402. And instead of simply returning a 402 response code, this extension actually enables payments, typically in the form of crypto or stable coins, as part of that API request. So this means the developer or the backend of an application can say, hey, I want you to pay if you wanna access this data, signals that to the user or the AI agent or client, whoever's accessing that API and allows them to send the payment. The backend or server verifies that payment goes through and then serves the data after that payment has been confirmed. This occurs in a two-step process where first the client requests some data from the server. The server will return a 402 payment required response code. Then the client says, okay, I need to send a payment of whatever the server specifies in order to access this data from the API, sends a second request including a payment, and this can be up to the implementation. It can be in a stable coin, it can be in a different coin on a different chain, it can be in the form of you know traditional payments like Stripe. It doesn't have to be cryptocurrency, but they initialize the payment or a signature, specifically in the case of crypto, a signature to authorize spending of a certain amount. Let's say I approve you to spend or withdraw 10 cents from my account. The server says, okay, let's first validate or verify that payment. And that occurs typically on a slash verify endpoint. Once it has been verified, and this typically just means a simple check of, do they actually have the required funds to make the payment? And is the signature valid that we can actually execute it? Once that's been verified, you will actually execute that payment. Now in the context of a blockchain or a stable coin, this occurs on chain, obviously, it can be on any chain, uh, like base, abstract, uh, polygon, et cetera, et cetera. And that occurs on an endpoint called slash settle. Once that transaction is confirmed, the server says, okay, the payment's gone through. Now I will actually give you back the data. So the two-step process here is first, they ask, hey, can I access this endpoint? The server responds back with, you need to pay if you wanna access this endpoint. The second phase is, okay, I need to pay to access it. Here is permission to spend the desired amount or the payment required to access this endpoint. The server quickly runs a check and actually executes that payment and then returns back the data to the client. The natural next question you might have is how does each server manage to verify and settle all of the payments? Do they have to build their own blockchain infrastructure, checking for confirmations, uh, managing transaction submissions onto different blockchains and different coins? And this is where a third party called a facilitator comes into play. So instead of a server having to write all of this complex logic themselves, typically you would just outsource it to a facilitator who specializes in these X402 implementations. So the server will say, hey, I've got this signature from the client. Can you please verify it? And if the verification is successful, can you actually settle that payment on chain? So the facilitator, which can be anybody, you can build your own facilitator if you want to, but there are facilitator services like Coinbase or Third Web, for example, which we'll use in this video, who offer these endpoints out of the box and handle all of that complexity for you to settle the payments on the different blockchains of your choice and different coins as form of payment of your choice as well. Okay, so now let's create our own payment gated API using an application created in Next.js. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have a Next.js API route and the data 
is not served back to the users until they send us a small payment. And we're going to use this using X402, specifically using ThirdWeb's X402 facilitator. So what we'll do is we'll first create a Next.js application, and then we'll dive into setting up ThirdWeb's X402 payments inside of our API route. First thing I'll do is create a new Next.js project with ShadCN installed for our component library. Then go ahead and add the third web dependency to your application. Nice, so now we have our Next.js application. First thing we're gonna do is actually create our API route. So we're just gonna create a route.ts inside of the API folder. So create a new folder here, call it API, and we will create a route.ts here. And we'll just add our very simple hello world response to this get request here. We'll go ahead and run the dev server and test this actually works. If we go to localhost 3000 slash API, we should see our response here. Now we wanna wrap that API request so that it requires an X402 payment in order to access the data that we're returning. To do that, I'm gonna to go to thirdweb.com and create a new project. I'll give it a quick name and the allowed domains. You can set this to what you want. I'm just gonna use localhost for now. And then we're gonna copy the client ID and secret key. Obviously you wanna keep these a secret. I'm just leaking them for the purpose of this video. I'm not gonna use these with any real project. Then back in cursor, we can create a .env.local file. First, we're gonna create next public third web client ID. Paste the client ID value in here. And then we'll do the same for third web secret key. Just make sure that one is not prefixed with next public. The third environment variable that we need is this wallet address here for the server wallet. So go ahead and copy that and set a third environment variable here for third web server wallet address. Paste that in. Final step we need to do is deposit some funds into our project server wallet here. So for example, on abstract testnet, which is a network I've, I've chosen to use, I just deposited uh, 0.01 uh, ETH for us to pay uh, some of the gas fees required with these transactions behind the scenes. So rather than just returning a hello world response, what we're gonna do now is use the ThirdWeb X402 package to handle the payment required to add a payment gate to this API endpoint, meaning that users will have to send a authorization to pay some amount from their account in order to access the data that we're returning from the server. I'll walk you through step-by-step -step back in our cursor here. The first thing we're gonna do is we'll import these dependencies here from ThirdWeb. So we have the X402 related ones, the create third web client, and the network that I've chosen, which is abstract testnet. Next, we initialize the third web client, as well as the third web facilitator, passing in the client, as well as our server wallet address from our environment variables here. Inside of the get request, we're going to extract the X payment header and save that into a variable called payment data. Next, we're gonna verify and process that payment in this function called settle payment, which we imported on line number one here. The things we're gonna pass into this object are the resource URL. So this is the API endpoint that you wanna request. For us, that is simply just the slash API endpoint of our local host. The method we're using is get pass the payment data in from the header here, the wallet address that we want to send this payment to. So for me, I'm just gonna use the server wallet address that we saved in the environment variables. The network we want to send this transaction on. For me, I'm gonna use the abstract testnet. And now we define how expensive this API request is going to be. So for me, I'm gonna use USDC and USDC is in six decimals. So this 10,000 represents one cent. And we just need to specify that we actually want to use the USDC asset, which is this wallet address, sorry, this contract address rather on abstract testnet here. And we're just going to use the facilitator from third web that we initialized here. Now, once that payment goes through, we store the result and we can see the status of that payment. So if the status was successful, i.e. a 200 okay response, we can actually return the premium content or the content that we wanna gate behind the payment in this block here. Otherwise, we can return this response in this else block here. Now from the home page, I've just removed all of the placeholder data that comes with the ShadCN Next.js template and just added use client on line one and we have an empty export of the home function here. Again, I'll just import the necessary dependencies. So I'm using a button, the create third web client function, the connect wallet button from third web called connect button 
and the use active wallet hook to check if our user has already connected their wallet or not. We'll import the third web wallet type so we can use that as a typed param for one of our functions. And finally, the wrap fetch with payment function again from third web x402. And that is coming from the same documentation that I showed you previously. Inside of our client, all we're going to do is check, is the user connected to our application with a wallet? If they aren't, we'll show them a connect wallet button. But if they are, we will show them a button to access our backend API with a payment using this wrap fetch with payment function. So to do that, we'll use this use active wallet hook. And if there is no wallet yet, we're going to return a connect button with the third web client. And we'll initialize that above our component here shortly. But if there is a connected wallet, we'll just show them a simple button that calls a function we haven't created yet called access premium content. And obviously this is going to call our backend API to try and access this premium content here. So again, we're going to create a third web client, this time initializing it with our third web client ID, and then we'll create this access premium content function, accepting the currently connected wallet as a wallet type param, as we imported that on line number six here. What we're going to do inside of that access premium content function is simply access the backend API route wrapped in this X402 payment. And that is all handled inside of this wrap fetch with payment function from third web slash X402 here. So we're going to say fetch with pay as a function is equal to wrap fetch with payment. We'll pass in the default fetch. We'll pass in our third web client and we'll pass in the currently connected wallet. This final argument, as you can see here, is the maximum value that the user is going to allow to be spent from their wallet. And we've just done a calculation to match what our backend API expects, which is one cent to pay for that one cent payment that we specified here in the price. Cool. So next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to call that function to run a fetch with pay onto our backend API route here. And we're going to grab the data out of that JSON response and we'll simply log it into our console and return that data from the function here. If we now pull up our app inside localhost 3000 here, give it a quick refresh and I've opened up the network tab so we can see what's going on behind the scenes here. In a disconnected state, obviously we go ahead and connect our wallet. So I'm gonna use MetaMask for this one. The one thing I will mention is you will need some of the testnet USDC. So you will need to have some of the currency that you're going to use to pay uh, to successfully make these payments. So let's go ahead and connect. This wallet has some testnet USDC as well as ETH. So now once we're connected, we see this pay to access premium content button. And what's interesting is when we first click this, we see in the network logs, a failed 402 response. So you can see it's pinging our backend API and we get a 402 payment required response code back. Now here you can see X payment header is required. And now our app is actually handling this by saying, okay, we received this failed X402, uh, sorry, 402 response. Now let's prompt the user to actually authorize this payment. So you can see here we're requesting one cent of USDC from the connected wallet and the type is going to be transfer with authorization. So basically we're approving this to spend one cent of USDC from our wallet. And this is gonna be valid between these time periods here. So now when we go ahead and confirm this, it's actually going to send a follow-up back to the API and we get that response back. So first we got the failed 402 response. Then we send that payment authorization along with a follow-up request to say, hey, here's my approval for you to spend this money from my wallet. And the transaction actually goes through on chain is confirmed and then our server responds back with the premium content. So this is successfully implemented a X402 payment gated API response. So that's it for this video. If you wanna check out the full code for yourself, I will leave a link in the description below as well as all of the tools that I use in this video if you want to replicate it yourself. With that said, if you enjoyed the video, help me out. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.